watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, I'm Sarah Connor and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. On tonight's show, I'm welcoming back Maureen Hazley Jones, the English lady, and she's going to help us do some indoor gardening this time by keeping our house plants healthy. Maureen, welcome back. Thank you. It's lovely to be here with you again, Sarah. It really is. And especially to talk about bringing the garden indoors in the winter. Well, I, Connecticut has long winters, so... Yes, yes. We <laughs> have to garden little, somehow, right? <laughs> need a little bit of bloom, don't we? Yes. And especially, too, it's so important. Um, the, the, the leaves of the plants in the house oxygenate the, the air and keep the air clean, you mm -hmm. know, which is so important. There's so much terrible stuff creeping around in the air inside, isn't there? Well, you have all your windows shut. All the you're windows just shut. You're recirculating right, whatever it is right. that's, yeah. And even if you're, you're, say you're painting inside, which our mm -hmm. team is doing this winter, use eco-conscious paint without any chemicals in, for instance. And okay. um, what was the other thing I was going to say? You know I'm often... Uh, humidifying? I'm Keeping humidifying. the air humidifying. Good girl. Yes. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> um, is um, pebble trays underneath all of your plants, except for the cacti. Mm -hmm. And um, also uh, a humidifier. If you can, folks, I mean, tell the, the folks, too, that um, there are lots of things on sale, humidifiers. Mm -hmm. I've got one downstairs and one upstairs. Mm -hmm. And I've also got an Ionic Breeze air cleaner, which makes a difference, too. But those are a little more expensive. Right. So if you can, though, the essential humidify, is the humidifier. humidify the area, yeah. yes. I know we're all, my whole family, we're all kind of scratching with yes. dry skin. Yes. And, it, you yes. know, at night it's hard to sleep when the air is so dry. Oh, it is. It really and is. And we have heat that's blowing, mm -hmm. and it's just circulating all those... I don't even want to know what it's circulating, but... <laughs> well, I must admit I'm quite hot-blooded, so I keep my air, my, my uh, temperature in the house down right. uh, at about 60, 58, 60 at night, so... Uh, yeah, we, turn, we do yes. turn it down at night, but right. it's still... Oh, you yeah. still have, it's just dry. It clicks on because, especially the, the, the temperatures we've been having this winter. Yes, right. it's been pretty brutal. But look at the, I mean, we've got all these lovely plants around we us. We have a great we? assortment, so should we just yes. talk about what we have on the Let's set? Let's talk can about tell that. us um, how to what keep to all do. of these growing, because exactly. some of these are brand new to me. Mm -hmm. So, um, which one of these are sort of foolproof. I always tell my husband, he frequently for Valentine's Day, instead of getting me flowers, will get me a plant because right. I love plants. Right, and it keeps going for you. Well, that's yeah. hopefully. Oh, all But right. he always right. asks the people that he gets the plants from, mm -hmm. what plants can really take abuse because I'm, I love to garden outside, mm -hmm. I love having houseplants, right. but I tend to kill them. It's the same, so, same thing. So help me. <laughs> All right, love, I'll, I'll try. So you this know. one Where has lasted a will, almost a, way, a year. Right? This was from last year. Right, that's the philodendron and you've got a small rubber tree in here. This is the small rubber yeah, tree. Yeah, that's the small rubber tree. Okay. And they both like the same growing environment, which is regular mm -hmm. soil. And the, what you do is, to, to, with the soil is one part potting soil, one part peat moss and okay. one part coarse sand. That's oh. the mixture you would have for a regular house plant. Interesting. Right. And that's not, if you got pot, a potting mix in a bag, that's not no. those things. No, it's not. So okay. just get your potting soil. Okay. It would be the same for the ivy over there, too. Okay. And then the other thing that you would do, too, is, um, you know, plants like to be moist through, through the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, all the time, just like you're humidifying the air. Okay. So you see, I'm just what I call misting a little bit here, okay. and um, and also if you do the same to the ivy behind you, okay. even if you get some on that Christmas cactus, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah. All right, so all on the top too, love. Don't be afraid. Right. That's it. 
So Wonderful. ivy, I st I'm scared of ivy because I've had... They don't like to be sodden. They don't like to, you know, have soggy, uh, soggy feet. So when the top uh, part of the soil, about two inches down, feels dry, that's when you would water it. Okay. And uh, all of the pots here, the ivy and um, the cyclamen over here, okay. um, I'll, I'll give that a little bit of a mist as well. It's, um, they like um, cool and they like moisture, you know, indirect okay. light, especially for the cyclamen, so that you can keep that going, you know, all the way through. So let's, let's talk about light, because I went in preparation for the show, because I honestly, I have been just starting to venture back into houseplants. When my kids were young, I just couldn't, I, I just killed them all, and mm -hmm. I think it was because I wasn't thinking about them. I, yes. was, I was neglecting them. Yeah. So I went and I bought a few things for the show, and mm -hmm. I was looking at the light requirements. Mm -hmm. So when it says... Ta so when it says moderate light, what does that does that mean? Right in the sun? Does no, it mean moderate, indirect? No, what, no. Or if, so talk moderate about the light, light means indirect light. Okay? okay, sunny would be, for instance, the Christmas cactus okay. over there, which is a jungle cactus. It's not the same environment as you would have for your succulent, your jade plant over here. Okay. Uh, which that could actually be in what I call a dish garden with the succulent and with another kind of cactus. Okay. In a mix, actually, the mix for the cactus would be um, one part um, potting soil, mm -hmm. one part um, of um, uh, peat moss, and three parts of coarse sand. You know, okay. good drainage, but they don't need a lot of nutrients. So, okay. so those are used be to fine. living in desert right. conditions. Right, and with the, like the succulent here, and the, the cacti, mm -hmm. you would just water about once a month, especially in the winter. So okay? for light, these I have this right Full in my sun. sunniest window. Exactly. In Full the sun, sun. Yes. on the table, right. direct sun. Right, right. So this should be the same, the that Christmas cactus? That should be the same, Any yes. cactus? You know Any cactus, okay. full sun. And then again, down here, we've got this lovely... Um, uh, African violet. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are so trouble-free, too. See, I, I, would, <laughs> I would argue differently. I've killed so many. Oh, yeah. What am I doing wrong? No, you're, you're so fine. So how are they trouble-free? Okay. What do you They're do? They're trouble-free. Number one, though, um, just as I say, you would mist, um, you know, all of, the, all of your plants. Right. At least every day during the week. Every and day? Every day. And okay. then when you would water them, put them in the sink and put, put, you know, the whole spray on them and let the water run down all the way through the soil. They love to have a bath. Okay. The only um, one that doesn't like to have a bath, does not like to have wet leaves, is your African violet. Okay. okay. However, in order for it to bloom, mm -hmm. um, it needs to be not right in the sun, but indirect, which would be back from a window... Mm -hmm. you know, maybe about six feet back um, so that it gets the sun's rays, but it, the sun's rays are filtered. And because it's a blooming flower, uh, a blooming plant, it would need to get um, African violet food, organic African violet food okay. about every other watering. But do not get the leaves wet. They don't like to have wet leaves. How frequently do you water um, the African again, violet? Again, this one, this one, it's nice and moist. It'll do fine now until, um, I would say, Friday. You know, so okay. check it like a couple of times a week. Depends on what's happening in the house with your heat, okay. you know, and lack of humidity. Again, mm -hmm. this one needs to be on a pebble tray. You know, okay. and by that, it can be an old saucer, you know, with just some pebbles in, okay. just like the pebbles here in the... Uh, um, in, in the paper whites okay. um, underneath and you, you know you keep those pebbles moist every day too you check those just go around with a little jug of water and, and, mm -hmm. and water the pebble trays too so that's really I'm thinking that's a good job for my girls <laughs> yes, yes they can go around with a watering of can course. and, and well, water you're the introducing pebbles. them right and then again. they learn yes what yes, to exactly. do when they have their own plants. exactly so it, I just want to talk about this a little bit more so All right. The soil, when I bought this, it said, um, evenly moist, don't let it dry out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the top might get dry and the bottom underneath might not be dry. So how do you know it's time if to the water? If the top is dry down about two inches, okay, then you water. But in okay. order to water it properly, you really should take all your plants into the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, and run the water all the way through so that the water comes out the bottom. You All right, know. so it's a Not, good thing when it's filtering down oh, through absolutely. and you see the you water need, coming out. Yes, because okay. many of these, even though it's a small plant, mm -hmm. many of the roots go all the way down through the pot. You know. Okay, so that's really the only way you know you've gotten all the way to the bottom exactly. is by seeing water come out. Right, 
and, okay. and that, that, that can bring us also, if you like, we can talk about your rubber plant. That, yes. Um, that they're having trouble with. Yes. Well, uh, let's, one more thing on right, the light. Okay. Just one more thing. Um, the indirect light, um, my husband and I were talking about this the other day because of the plant we're going to talk about in a minute. Yes. But, um, so the this, this sunny, sunny window that I have this in is in my living room. Yes. It's southern exposure. Mm -hmm. It gets gobs of sun. And right. Long, like almost full wall yes. windows. Yes. So this is right in the sun. Excellent. So this would do well maybe like on the coffee table in that room yes. because it still gets sunlight. Actually, yes, exactly. The room is still lit by the sun, Filtered but it's sun. not in the window. Right, because it, you would find, if you ever did that, mm -hmm. put that right up there, those leaves would burn within okay. a couple of days. Okay. Yes. That right. would, and, and then it could also burn the buds. These new emerging buds mm -hmm. with full sun could be just um, dried up and shriveled. Okay, so you're going right. to keep the soil moist. Mm -hmm. Feed it every other time you mm -hmm, water it, mm -hmm. and then have the pebble tray and indirect sunlight. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to try. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> oh, do that. And then, you know, you've got your primula here, which is another blooming plant, because it's so lovely to have, you know, different... It's nice to have flowers yes. in, in the winter, yes. especially. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I do, too, like you've got the, the uh, um, Christmas cactus mm -hmm. over there with, with the ivy. I would put this little guy next... Well, not really, actually, because... Well, never mind. I was, talking, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking Skip about that. light because this one uh, needs to be moist. Okay. So um, this one will need a watering. Is this similar treatment to the African violet? It needs a lower light. Even less light? Yes, because okay. the primula or primrose outdoors, you'd find it on the woodland edge, which would be part shade. Oh. So this one would be an indirect light, which would be the same as the cyclamen, which is over here. Which would okay, be so what does indirect indirect light, mean? light would mean um, east facing window so okay. that you get a little bit of morning sun, but then it 's shady in the afternoon, shady and cool for the rest of the day, okay. and away from a heat source, for instance, this cyclamen is at the bottom of my main staircase. Okay. Um, there are no radiators around mm -hmm. you know there 's humidity going because I have the humidifiers on, and um, this is this uh, primrose mm -hmm. would enjoy the same conditions. Okay. As that moist, and because again it's blooming, uh, alternate times of watering is when you give it a dilute application of um, of your orga organic fertilizer. Okay. Okay. So think woodland, woodland half edge. shade, yeah, half for shade, these guys, and the cyclamen, because yes. I've killed a cyclamen too. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Which I love. But I, I mean, I loved the plant, right. and I just, I, I don't know, I must, either over well, I don't know what I did. I must, I did a lot of things Well, what wrong, you would I'm do sure, with the so. cyclamen, too, when it's finished blooming, you take mm -hmm. off the dead flowers, and then you let it dry. You know, you'll let the, the plant dry out. In okay. um, June, you'd put it outside, okay? And then you'd water it just, just uh, regularly. And so then when you say dry out, you mean the leaves dry and everything so when sort of the dies leaf, Everything back? dries back, exactly. So it all dies back? All dies back. To put it outside. You know, Ooh. bring it back in in September, and you okay. would repot it. You know, you repot it in new potting soil, uh, but make sure that the bulb, because that's a bulb in there, the bulb is is level with the rim of the uh, uh, of uh, of the of the pot, and then you can start watering it again, okay. and it will come back for you. So when you put it outside, you put it outside where it just gets regular rain. Well, yes, do you water yeah. it when it's outside? You are, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, but but not a lot. The, the, the outside temperature will take care of it. Okay. But when you put it outside, because it likes, again, shady inside, mm -hmm. put it like under a tree would be a good idea. And you just let it sit there for the summer? Yes, yeah. Yeah. That's what I did wrong. I didn't kill it. I just didn't give it new life. <laughs> I thought it was dead. Oh, it loves to be outside and, I and talk no to other, the, the other plants in the garden. So it's yes. really a bulb that comes in and mm -hmm. blooms. How long does it, should you expect it to bloom? It should bloom... Uh, December through to about March, so about three okay. months. So it's yes. it is actually a winter blooming yes. bulb. Yeah, it is here. Here, because okay, it's, right. it, it's what's called a tender. This is not the zone for having this guy outside. Oh, I see. But if you are in certain areas of, um, uh, you know, California, Southern mm -hmm. California, you know, winter, this guy could be outside very nicely. Oh, I'm going to try that. Yeah, that's great. So let's talk about. Excuse me, I have a very large rubber plant at home um, that I just got this fall, and I said to you, something's wrong with it because, it, you know, is it normal that the leaves are turning yellow and mm -hmm. they're dropping off? And it's, it has a long trunk, long, mm -hmm. thin trunk, like and then tree. these big, it's a tree, mm -hmm. these big leaves, and mm -hmm. it's beautiful. And I was 
told two things when I purchased it. We, the room we have it in, does, it's a um, room that has northern, northeastern exposure. So there's not a lot of sunlight that That's comes good. into that room. That's which good. We, they said this plant will be good for that. And then they said don't overwater it. So mm -hmm. I've been uh, trying to be on a once monthly schedule well, of watering well, it. Well, this plant, the rubber plant, just like the, um, the philodendron mm -hmm. here, uh, Monstera, which is the other name, is the cheese plant, and um, the spider plant. They're what I call institutional plants. Okay. You can have them in the foyer of many um, large corporations when yes. you walk okay. in, or mm -hmm. hospitals, or nursing homes, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. They're pretty trouble-free. Um, however, Except mine's not well, happy. <laughs> the other thing, what you can do is, um, if you can, make sure it's in a um, um, terracotta pot. Okay. Which is porous. Mm -hmm. And what you've been doing while you're losing leaves is because um, you're only watering the top, a few layers of the, plant, of the, of the, of the root. Mm -hmm. You're not watering it all the way through. So right, because it's in a very large, one mm -hmm. of the pictures, uh, you should be seeing pictures as we're talking about this, and one of the pictures shows the big pot, mm -hmm. and inside that pot is the actual pot that the plant right. and the philodendron, the rubber right. tree and the philodendron are in, right. and I have no way of knowing if the water is coming all the way through mm -hmm. or not. So you suspect Take it it's out. not. No, exactly. Take it out, repot it, but don't pot it in, only into a pot that's maybe an inch or two larger. Okay. okay, with um, the mix that I gave you for regular plants, mm -hmm. which is one part um, potting soil, one part peat moss, and one part coarse sand. Okay. Then in, in, in that terracotta pot then, once a week, take it and put it in the sink, fill the sink with water, so that that water is getting absorbed all the way through uh, into that root system. Because so are you putting water on top of the soil as well? You can put water on top of the soil if, if your sink is not that deep in as you know, say, mm -hmm. say it's not coming over the top. So you're saying yes, just submerge. Top and bottom. Submerge yeah. Let it. Let it sit there for about half an hour. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And then drain it. Mm-hmm. And put it back. Put okay. it back. So it's not the light, it's the water. It's the watering. Okay. Yes. yes. Now, I have been moaning about how I keep killing houseplants, but you have a friend who swore she had a black thumb as well. Yes. I don't think I have a black thumb. I think I just, I, I just well, need I don't tips. Think, I need some Yeah, I don't tips. know whether she thought she had a black so. thumb, but, but she was a little insecure about yes. it, you know, the, 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 the plants. Well, for four years she kept a poinsettia going by having it inside and outside. And then now she has a wonderful mandevilla vine. Okay. You know, with the lovely, Which we have a picture. We yes, should be seeing a picture with of the, it. With the red flowers. Uh -huh. And um, it is doing so well in a sunny window, mm -hmm. you know, but it's filtered because it's back from the window. It's not right up against the window mm -hmm. and it's on, you know, a pebble tray. She keeps it watered and it's doing really it's marvelously doing well. So and the trick is the humidity, making sure you're watering it all the way through yes. and you have it in the right light. Right, right, absolutely. And the soil mix. Yes, and then the other thing to do with the soil mix and soil and potting, mm -hmm. it's best to um, um, repot only during the growing season. And what is the growing season for the growing plants? Season Don't they grow would all be, year? Would be the end of April through to September. That's the best time to repot the plants. Um, repot, um, moisten the top of the soil first, mm -hmm. and tip the, the, the plant lightly on the side, and ease it out gently. Okay. And um, then, you know, if you're going to use the same pot, scrub it really clean with a dilute so a solution of bleach. You know, really and that's to get any germs, yes, or bacteria, any or anything. Of, all, the, all the rest okay. of it, too. And also, um, you, uh, you know, put it back in the, into the soil. Don't have it any deeper in the pot than it was originally, mm -hmm. with some nice potting soil around it. And when you repot, um, add a dilute application of an organic fertilizer. Okay. Yeah. So I have a, one of the things that I bought, which... I'm excited. I'm so excited about I We have this super sunny window in our dining room as well, mm. which has the same exposure as our living room. Right. And I have envision cacti and all sorts of sun-loving plants in there. So I bought this aloe plant. And it, to me, looks like... It looks very healthy, but it's in this teeny tiny pot. And when you put the pot down, it tips over. It's top-heavy. And, yes. yes. and it's, you know... It just seems like it's dying to be repotted. It is dying to be repotted. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 would, it would thank you, even though it's the, <laughs> what I call the wrong time of year. Mm -hmm. It would be great. So what you would do because... So this is an exception I should because it's just so desperate exactly. to be in a bigger and pot. Exactly, and you would use the okay. same mix 
in repotting as you would for your succulent or your cacti. Can you go over that mix again? Exactly. One part potting soil, mm -hmm. one part uh, peat moss, and three parts coarse sand. Coarse sand. But this little guy definitely was put in a pot much too small. So mm -hmm. you could put it I in... I mean, a, he's... Look at yes, this. It's just Put it skipping. in a pot maybe about two inches larger than that. Um, okay. So the normal rule of thumb is about an inch? About an inch but to this two. this guy, But that so one, because it's, it's in the wrong size period. Okay. Yeah, about two inches larger. Okay. And, and this is one of those where you... This is aloe where you snap the leaf. Exactly. And, and then the, the mm -hmm. ingredients inside... Wonderful for healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when you when you snap it, what happens to it? Does it just sort it'll, of bind off, yeah, or does it rejuvenate? Keep, yeah, it keeps yeah. growing. Exactly. So I'm very very excited about right. this. So I'm going to have to go home and repot this guy. <laughs> and one of the things too, Sarah, uh, we all have um, um, uh, animals in the house. Yes. Is it gonna, is it gonna, no, it's all right. It's fine. I think it's. Um, <laughs> it's and many of them will go after the plants. Of mm -hmm. course, some of the plants too, they're poisonous, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, Yes, the yeah. poinsettias. I was very worried about the poinsettias exactly, with my dog. Exactly. Yes. Um, but if you want to keep um, animals away from your plants, mm -hmm. the cats or the dogs, if you put a little cayenne pepper in the water mm -hmm. when you're watering, it will keep them away. Interesting. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, it's it. funny because when I went to the. I went to a. Um, gardening center um, to get these and there was a woman checking out next to me and she was buying a tray to grow wheatgrass in because mm -hmm. her cat was eating her plants ah, there you and go. she said is this gonna you know get the cat to stop eating my plants and the guy said that the cats really do mm -hmm. like the wheatgrass they do in fact so, my friends in California mm -hmm. uh, in Palm Springs they have that because they have two cats but the cats kept on going for the orchids so mm -hmm. now they have the, these trays of wheatgrass around mm -hmm. and the, so that the, keeps them busy. Yes, it keeps yeah. them busy. It definitely does. That's excellent. And then the other thing um, um, I do, which you can see here. I was going to say, we haven't talked about this which, yet. Yeah, these mm. are the... Um, um, Let me move this so yeah, we these can are the paper white narcissus. The paper whites. I bought about three dozen of them. And what okay. I do is I, I pot them up, up in the... Um, in the pebble, in the, in the gravel, in the pebbles, mm -hmm. uh, rather than potting soil. You can do either, but I prefer the okay. gravel. And um, I, I do them, like, pot up another lot every two to three weeks. So this way I'll have bloom all the way through to March and April. So the ones that are not being potted, what do you do? With, where do you keep They're them? They're in a brown paper bag in a very cool, dark room. Could it right. be in a drawer in your refrigerator, or is that too cold? It could be, as long as you have them in a paper bag, though, and it's not touching any food. Okay. You don't want to do that, okay. because uh, you know you can get uh, mm -hmm. problems from that. So when um, you pot them, what do you do? You, what you do is you put the bulbs in, mm -hmm. and you secure them with, with the pebbles, okay. and put them in a dark room for about three weeks to a month until they, you know, you, you've got the foliage and you've got the buds. These are the buds here. Uh -huh. And then you bring them out into the light wherever you want to display them. And what you do is you have to make sure, though, that you keep the, the, the pebbles... Um, um, moist. Moist, right. So now the water goes up to the top of where the pebbles are? The yeah, top of the pebbles? it's actually what it's doing is it's not covering the bulb, mm -hmm. but it's, it's soaking the, the roots. The roots. Yes. Now when it's in the dark room, um, is it watered in the yes. dark room? Okay. If you see that the water is going down, you know, because water evaporates, mm -hmm. You would uh, you go in and, and you'd uh, put the water okay. in. Is yeah. February too late to find these things in the store? Do you think it might be too late? I think it may be, but okay. but it's a, it's a good one to have in mind for next year okay. because when these will be in bloom, I have them down mm -hmm. in my dining room, for instance, or the living room. Uh -huh. In the morning, you come down, the fragrance of the oil yeah. is beautiful. And it's not an expensive thing to have around either. I or like how you up. have it in this um, tall glass container because right. you can see you can see the greenery and yet it's helping to keep them up it keeps them up uh -huh. and not only that i have some in an even taller grass vase at home and the other way that you could help stop them from falling if you only have mm -hmm. a, 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 a a smaller, a smaller pot mm -hmm. is put an ounce of gin cheap gin Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, okay cheap, cheap gin uh -huh. in the water okay and that will stunt actually the foliage growth it will not inhibit the the, uh, the bloom though or the uh, you know the the, the, the blossoms right, at the all blossom, yeah just but the an ounce greenery. of gin will shorten the, the foliage make sure it's cheap gin though I mean you don't yeah, want to waste the good stuff <laughs> that's excellent right so let's talk a little bit about so we we've talked about the house plants and the light and the soil you should use and all of these 
tips are on your website, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. The, these tips are all on the website. And um, also, how much time do we have? Well, now? we have a few minutes, and I wanted to um, talk a little bit about February being a good time to start your seeds. Exactly, exactly. So do you want to... I, I brought... The, one, the tip that I brought <laughs> was um, I try and use February vacation with my girls mm -hmm. as my reminder to start seeds inside. Yes. To be put outside in, when it gets warm enough. Right. And so um, someone uh, along the line said to save egg crates. Egg and crates. And you can use them to, or to old takeout containers. As long as you can or, get uh, one to two inches of soil in. Right. So, you okay. Know. So you need to make sure they're deep enough. Right. And you can okay. also use an old um, um, milk carton. You know, cut mm -hmm. that down um, okay. because the actually... The carton type or the plastic type? The carton type. Carton type, okay. Right. Because again, you've got stuff coming from the plastic, not good. Right, that's true. Yes, that's true. But the other thing you want to do before, um, like as soon as you can in February, make your manure tea. Okay. That recipe will be on my website. You know, it okay. is on is my it website. Is it complicated? We might no. be able to sneak it in. What do you no, mix? Manure isn't. and what? Yeah, you get the large 30-gallon bin from the hardware store okay. on wheels, mm -hmm. fill it with water, get a large burlap square and or a sack, put in three or four shovelfuls of manure, tie the top like a tea bag. It's not as good oh, as so Earl Grey, but tea. yeah. <laughs> you, you, you put the, you know, that bag in uh -huh. the, in the, in the, uh, the, uh, water and every few days you'll dip it up and down just like you were steeping, steeping tea and in about uh, one you know 10 days to two weeks you'll have this lovely potent manure tea that okay. you can the night before you you plant your seeds soak the seeds in in, in some manure tea so you just scoop the tea out yeah yeah and yeah. put it in a let them know, soak you know then take soak them, them out and let them drain off a bit okay and then when the the seeds germinate you can also feed them with the manure tea too. Do you feed yeah. them straight or do you dilute the manure tea? Well, no, it's diluted with the water. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you just straight from the container? Oh, sure, absolutely. And oh, you know, excellent. I mean, I love manure. Yes, my, I know. <laughs> my fragrance preferences are, are, have always been weird. You know, it's, it's in my blood. Well, as my daughter <laughs> says, it smells like horses, so, and she loves horses, yes, so. Yeah. <laughs> So all of these tips are on your website, plus everything that we couldn't get to. Exactly. And that's www.theenglishlady.com, right? Exactly, yes. Theenglishlady.com. Theenglishlady.com. Okay, that's great. Maureen, thank you for joining me again. It's been a pleasure. This has been, I am hopeful that I will have thriving houseplants. Well, I mean, and doesn't time fly when you're having fun, right? It does. Especially when we're surrounded by all this greenery and bloom. I know, this is bloom. so terrific. You've been watching Life in Style with Sarah. I'm Sarah Connor, and I thank you for watching. Don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode. Thanks, and good night. Mm -hmm.